last summer I had the, or I'm sorry, last winter, I had uh, the opportunity to go down to Mexico um, on a vacation with my wife. And we visited um, some of the areas of the Mayan um, ruins. Um, we specifically went to the city of uh, Tulum, which is a little bit south of um, Can what is modern day Cancun um, on the southern coast of the Yucatan Peninsula. And we visited um, a couple other of the ruins there, took some pictures, brought them back. Um, on the top left and where I have circled or squared off in the green there, this is uh, one of their uh, astronomical measurement devices. They were able to use this little portal and it's part of a larger complex that is the temple of the of the city of Tulum um, to measure, take measurements of the sun and the height of the sun and they can predict eclipses and all sorts of other things from it. You have a smaller Mayan house over here on the right. have no idea who that lady is in the picture. She just basically photobombed me. Okay, and then on the bottom, one of the more interesting things is this is a Mayan ball court. And um, this is where they play their equivalent of lacrosse. Uh, from the way I understood it, it's a pretty brutal game. Um, it's kind of like warrior training. Um, the the court uh, takes up, uh, you play up in this area here, up in here, and in the middle. Um, there's goals at both ends. And then the crowds would be up in the bleachers on the two ends. And there were other areas on the sides to be able to watch the game from. Um, like I said, it's a brutal game. Kind of like the, the lacrosse of, the, native, of the, the Iroquois around here. Very similar style game. Okay, um, we're going to start by talking about the Olmecs. They are kind of a, a predecessor to the Mayans. Um, they were centered around the area of the, the Gulf Coast. This area here along the Bay of Campeche um, that I've circled, but it's in yellow. Um, their largest city was a place called San Lorenzo. Okay, it's believed that they developed... Between 12, or before, around 1200 BC, and they declined around 400, um, when they may have just kind of morphed into what we now know as the Mayas. Okay, we don't know a lot about them, um, like we do the Aztecs and the Mayans. And the biggest reason for this is because they didn't leave a lot of records behind. Okay, at least nothing that we could decipher. Um, and many of the uh, what we've now determined to be Olmec artifacts. Um, were originally thought to be Mayans, and that the Mayans were thought to be the first great culture of the area, um, not the Olmecs. Um, they believed to have rose from people in the area, but there also may be some thought that the Olmecs originally came from Africa. Okay, and there is a lot of evidence showing um, from archaeological relics, rel uh, records showing contact between peoples of Africa and peoples of Southern America and um, Central America. Major urban area, like I said, is San Lorenzo Tenochtitlan, uh, which is coincidentally also the name of what is now Mexico City under the period of the Aztecs. It was the largest city in Mesoamerica to that time. Um, it was both a ritual place where they conducted um, religious rituals, but also it was the political center of the Olmec territory. Probably as thousands of people lived there. Um, there's evidence that there's a leverage water and drainage system of, for both sewer and fresh water to be brought to the city. Um, the Olmecs are mostly remembered uh, because of the gigantic stone heads that have been found in this area. Um, these are now thought to have been statues of rulers. Um, so they're, they're very significant. You can see them on the right. These are made out of heavy limestone. Um, and this is one of the reasons that we find the Olmecs to be a little bit more interesting than some of the other cultures around that time. Um, they used and developed a lot of different things, both culturally and religiously, that would be passed down to the Mayas and then the Aztecs. Um, they had a very wide influence in the day. They were the most powerful, at least from what we can determine, of the, 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 the groups living in that era. And they may be responsible for a lot of cultural diffusion um, through trade and other things because they did trade very widely to get... Um, the, the materials they needed. They carved in stone, they started color carved in jade, and they carved in the volcanic basalt rock that they used to make those giant, giant stone heads. And most of this stone was quarried and imported from somewhere else, which lends to some sophistication of moving things because they did not have beasts of burden like cows and donkeys and um, other large animals to move this stuff. So it was all done with human power. Um, rich society, and they traded with people from all over Central, um, the northern parts of South America, out into the islands. Um, very extensive trading network when, with the Olmecs. 
Okay, brings us to the Mayans. The Mayans are an agricultural people. Um, they grow a lot of different crops, crops um, and their civilization was at its height from around 300 to around 900 uh, A.D. It's possible that they may have actually developed earlier than that. We're starting to find some older evidence buried in the jungles, uh, and they, it's tough, getting tougher to see where the Olmecs ended and the Mayans begin. Um, to build their civilization, they had to clear areas in what is a very dense rainforest, and they used the slash and burn method that we talked about in class to do this. They would cut down the trees and then burn them to fertilize the soil, um, and then they would grow corn and beans and squash, and also cotton and a few other things. Um, they used the cotton for making clothes, and much of um, these things are still carried on today by traditional Mayans. They built a great number of cities, as we've seen from some of the maps we looked at. One of the earliest, most significant ones is Tikal. Um, the cities were all administrative centers uh, for the ruling class of Mayan priests, and the nobles governed each city. Okay, um, Within their cities, they constructed flat-top temples that served not only as the tombs of rulers and as a temple, but also as an observatory to study the stars and the planets. Okay, um, many of the, the, the celestial bodies, the stars and planets, the Mayans looked upon as gods. So you have kind of a multi-purpose building. This is uh, the, the temple at Chichen Itza, which is of the later Mayan period, and it is, I believe, the largest pyramid um, of the, that we found, at least, that the Mayans built. Okay, um, Mayans believe that the gods, these heavenly bodies, controlled all aspects of life, including the farming cycle. And that was why they were so interested in the study of astronomy to figure out when they were supposed to plant. They also had a very diverse social hierarchy or class system, similar pyramid shape to a lot of the other societies we've looked at. Priests and nobles are at the top, followed by merchants. And you can see the Lord, he's the highest authority in the city, manages all the city's affairs. He's probably the chief military officer, and his title is passed down to his oldest child, most likely a male. Then you had kind of an underlayer of rulers, the, the nobles. They're the chiefs and the lesser officials. They rule over the smaller towns surrounding the major city. They're the tax collectors. They also provide supplies and labor for projects. And they're kind of the underleaders of any military force that the city might send out. Priests, probably some of the most powerful people because they lead the worship of the gods. Um, and they were responsible for interpreting a lot of the signs and saying who was in favor and who was not. Like most societies, you had a merchant and artisan class. These are the people that make things and sell things. Um, peasants usually farm workers and other laborers. Um, and then during the dry season or during the campaigning season, they would become the foot soldiers of the army. And then finally you had the slaves. Um, some were born into slavery, others captured uh, either as prisoners of war or as criminals. And of course, they have the worst jobs and the most physically demanding. These are probably the guys that were hauling around the stones to build those Mayan temples in those Mayan cities. Okay, Mayans trade in jewelry, grain, salt, cloth, animals. We've, ducked, we've touched a little bit on the Mayan trade within the community, but they also traded beyond um, the Yucatan Peninsula, the area that they were dominant in. They developed a written language that they, we call glyphs, um, and they're, it's a symbol language. It's not letters like we have today, um, where a symbol would mean something, okay? Okay. Um, they kept detailed astronomical records. You've probably heard about the Mayan calendar and all the other stuff. They, they did do all that stuff, okay? Uh, their astronomers, who are also priests, are able to predict, predict eclipses. Um, it's a pretty powerful thing to be able to do that, especially in ancient times, when you can say the sun is going to go away, but then I can bring it back because you know how the eclipses are going to happen. Um, and, you know, the ignorant people of the masses... They don't know what causes this. Neither really did the priests, but they knew that they could predict when they were going to happen. A lot of these pyramids still stand today. I've been to visit some. You can look them up on the Internet. There's all of them. Um, very uh, intricately carved, decorated, much more so than a lot of the other cultures in the ziggurats of Mesopotamia, the pyramids uh, in Egypt, and even some in China and um, in India. Okay, They develop a 365-day cal calendar. Um, at the same time 
that the Greeks and the Romans are doing this, that the Indians are doing it. They develop it independently. So a lot of people will think that maybe they were inferior because they didn't have the metalworking and all that that maybe the other cultures did. And a lot of it was is there wasn't the availability of iron ore and some of the other metals that became weapons in the, where they lived. So they had to use stone. Um, but their cal calendar is used for farming. It's very accurate. Okay, they use interlocking cycles of time based on the idea that time is a burden carried on the back of the gods. And at the end of the cycle, the god laid down his burden and another picked it up. And this kind of explains that whole idea of the Mayan calendar ending. Because there's a cyclical calendar, they end it all the time and it would just restart and begin again. Okay. So, for unknown reasons, which we will be discussing in class, the Mayans abandoned their cities between 800 and 900 AD. Many of their descendants, as we've talked about, live in Mexico, Mexico and Guatemala. So, I'm going to have you be able to tell me this tomorrow in class. Where was the Mayan Empire located? We've already talked about that. What major crops did they grow? What method of agriculture did they use? And who is at the top of the social hierarchy? And what is that person's duties? Okay, that is it for now.